Hey guys, how you doing? Just got 15 plus 10 up. Um, normal play, my opponent's rated 13, 38. And okay, so we've got a Vienna. Now I'm getting this quite a lot, this, this D6. Very, very quiet. I haven't checked my notes on it. Okay. Opponent's playing quickly. He's got his bishop back in front of the king now. I've got queen here or here, both of which come with a threat of queen takes f7. And knight out doesn't work. g6 may, if I play, for example, queen h5. g6 and then queen comes back to f3 in normal wayward queen style. Um, I don't think there's any point in trying that idea. And there's a big fat ass fly flying around. For which reason? I like to keep a badminton racket next to my desk, so you may have to excuse me at some point. Question is, do we want to throw the queen out into the board? And the answer will depend on whether it strengthens our position or strengthens blacks. Bastard. Right, okay. You're going to annoy me all game. Okay. So, if I do this, what's he going to do? Well, he can't do that, and also he can't bring out his queen to f6, which is another common resource. So how can he defend? He can't really push this pawn, because I just take it with the bishop and it's still on. So he's going to have to push g6, and I think g6 is enough of a concession for it to be worth doing. So, I think he has to do this. Kofi... Agyekum from Ghana. And th this is a weakening, all right? Because if he should castle, uh, then kingside, he's going to have a whole load of fresh air around here. Okay, so now clearly my queen is under attack. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop back down to f3, I think is the plan. Yep because the check is still on. It's not mate, because he's got um, king d7. Okay, and now this is kind of forced, but now what I'm going to do, okay, do I have to worry about the bishop coming out here? So if I push d3, and he plays bishop out here, there's nothing <clears throat> of value behind my king. I'll probably just play queen g3. This pawn's still defended, so that's fine. So I've got two battles going on at once here. There's Hunty versus Kofi. And Hunty versus that in fly. Right. Now, first thing that jumps straight to mind is Bishop H6. This hits Rook, forces Rook here. Okay? Now, Rook there is not is not necessarily a bad thing for black because it's in line with my king. That, but there are other advantages to this. For example, it stops his h-pawn from coming up. It also means that I'm ready to castle. And I may start consider a pawn storm. We've had a pawn storm requested. So I'm going to throw my bishop out there. I don't see a particular downside to it. Okay, he's done his rook here. Now do I castle? I think I should. And just... I mean, my queen's slightly in the way of, of things over here. But Okay, so he's developed knight. Knight could come here. I have um, knight g to e2, which de-encourages that idea. Okay, landed now. Um, there's no reason to retreat. I mean, I could retreat my bishop as well, but I think knight g e2 makes makes a bit of sense. I'm not putting it in the way of Freddie or Harry. You see, that's that's the point. If I go here or here, I could get in people's way. So I put, okay, right, I'm going, I'm going to take, I'm not really going to think too hard about that, because then this, when, after pawn recaptures, this knight can come back to here. I'm then attacking the pawn. And I'm fine. See, pawn takes here, knight to e2, attacks pawn. What's he going to do? c5? c5 isn't great, because it creates an outpost here as well. See? 
because there ain't no pawns that can now control that square. Oh! Well, look at that. See, I forgot all about that bishop threat, didn't I? Hello. Okay. Well, it's going to be this. Okay, I can now take with knight or king or rook. That was well played. Right, you, you have to die. Because <clears throat> you're disrupting my game. And now I've just lost, gone down the exchange all because of your stupid ass. Okay. Can you hear that as well? It's really annoying. Okay. Um, advantages of knight. I mean, I, I guess I don't even have to recapture. There's another option. See, if I, if I take here, he takes knight, I have to retreat knight. Okay. Having said that, Oh shit. Oh, that was a complete. Right. One minute. Where are you? Where are you? Okay. So he saved his bishop, bishop now. So I have to come back here, don't I? And now he's going to take my knight. So I'm going to be down a full rook. Game on. And I can't go there, because bishop just takes. So it's the idea to go forwards. If knight takes, by the way, it undefends the bishop. Right, we're going to kill this fly. And we're going to try and do the same to Kofi, which requires concentration. That was just a complete mouse. I don't know why I even clicked on the queen. But this is sometimes the, um, the hazard of making chess videos. But you know, it's a good challenge coming from behind. My opponent has a slightly offside pawn, but it is in my half and it is in a sensitive place. Okay. Right. I come say come back here takes takes opens up the center. What I want to do, I think, is kind of get my queen here if I can. So I'm inclined maybe to push f3, queen f2, come after this pawn. If this knight ever moves, I've mate. You see, as long as it doesn't come here. Um, my my bishop's not fantastic. But, you know, if his bishop goes, my bishop gets in there, I don't know. I'm going to play f3. Play this. He may, he still has c5. I heard you then, you bastard. All right, now he's choosing to push. He wants to take my bishop, I think and force DC. Um, so this... I think he's nervous about the... Um, now what do I do? Uh, one option is to take out the dark square bishop, right? Another option is to take out the knight. Another option is to retreat, which means here and let him trade off. So let's work those through. I take bishop, probably like queen takes. Now it does mean he's lost his dark square defender around the king. That could be relevant. Also, I have a, a strong light squared um, pawn chain, which means that both light squared bishops become less favorable. So I'm wondering, I'm going to do this. Let's, let's try this one. Comes with check. He has to do something about it. Um, we've, st we've then got bishop tension that we need to think about. Uh, yeah, queen can't take there. It's going to be defended even if queen recaptures. Okay. 
So then we have the issue. Do I initiate the trade? <clears throat> Do I ignore, maybe play queen f2 with the idea of this? Do I drop back and if takes, take back with the a pawn? That's also a thought. It does create a, a risk down that corner. But I, saw, I also have a threat of my own up here. This is also a thought. If I take queen takes, I, I'm going to have to defend that corner anyway. Let's do this. Right, would it, if you see a fly, mate, can you just eat it, please? Cheers, man. Right, so I'm recapturing towards the centre with the A pawn. And he's going to need more than one piece. He can't just drop his queen in here and checkmate me, right? Not if I put my king on B1. Right, it's now got itself stuck in the window. Well, you can stay there. All right, now, I'm going to drop back here without a second thought because I'm going to... This is the idea. But first I have to dislodge the knight because the knight defends g7, doesn't it? How is he going to get that bishop out of there? Because he can't go to this square or this square because of my pawns. The knight has to go into a light square to hit the dark square. And currently all of these light squares are out of bounds and so are these. Right, so these, these are the four squares that could hit the bishop. Right, and he can't he can't get to them. All right. First thought is g four. Also, ideas of g five. G four is the knight going to come in here? If it does, hmm. Should I get my rook on the g file? Decisions, decisions. Or h4 and bishop here shoes the queen away. She can't get there, there. h4 doesn't look like a bad move at all. h4 and then maybe this. Knight can still come in. I think it's time to throw pawns at the position. He hasn't engaged this rook yet. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a rook down, but in a way, so is he until he decides to play with this one. Okay. That does not scare me. I'm thinking g4. So if g4 and let's say knight moves and then g5. Okay, well he's all right, he's not attacking me. What he's doing is defending that sensitive pawn. Because I really, really, really want to get my queen onto this diagonal. But maybe f6 is gonna have to be my entry point, I don't know. Yeah, I think g4. Hits knight. Knight can only go here or here. Because here I can't go there, by the way, because there's a royal fork. So you need to be a little bit careful. Okay, he's got in. Okay, fascination street. Now, um, name the album and artist, fascination street. Maybe about 92. 91. Anyway, back to the game. Right, this hits queen. Queen can't go here or here or here or here, right? So queen has to go yeah, 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 or yeah. Then can I just force my way through on this? Taketh, taketh. Queen, uh, if Queen goes here, <sighs> I've also got Bishop here, pushing the Queen back. Bishop here. She'll still probably go here. She's got a couple of squares, but then I can push through to do. I'd really love to open. I want to get rid of this G, G pawn. And if I push and he pushes, I'm done. Right. But there, if I hit the queen and then I can push, 
hit the queen. We've only got two squares, eh? Because she can't retreat. No, don't disconnect. Where's your tool? Name the film. Okay, <clears throat> right, he's back. We're back in the room. Okay, so idea number one, push. He shouldn't capture. That would be foolish. It'd be nice if I had another rook, wouldn't it? What about f4, f5? I mean, it's a crazy idea, but it may just work. f4, f5. Hits queen again. Queen can't get there, there. I'm trying it. See, now he's got the bit between his teeth. Now we find out about what kind of player Kofi is. Okay, he blunders pawn. Fair enough. Okay, hits queen. So he's taken my g-pawn, which is not necessarily a terribly bad thing. Right, that's one down, one to go. Now, either of these, if he takes, you see, his knight guards, but not if I attack the, oh, the knight. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Okay, there, there, pawn takes, yeah. What if I lift my queen first? Then this pawn takes queen can t oh no, I have to move the queen, the uh, bishop. There, there pawn takes bishop here, knight's under attack twice by bishop and rook, and queen cannot come to the rescue because she's on a light square. So she can't come here, obviously can't come here. <sighs> right, we're coming for you, Kofi. Something else that I've noticed that about my play recently, with, with thanks from all of you as well, because we're all learning it together and uh, I get some fantastic comments, um, is sometimes this tendency just to focus on one, one area of the board. I think, I feel like, you know, it's almost like there's, there's one thing happening. And um, I just ignore everything else. For example, I had a rook and a queen harassing my opponent's king in open water, right, on, on the queen side earlier on. I failed to give check and, and blundered to a, a, a one move back rank checkmate. Just because I forgot the basics. All right, now. Okay. What is the more powerful piece? Should I do this? Stop his pawn from advancing. If I do this, he can push. That doesn't work because I take. I feel like that has to be... I don't want to trade, just on principle, right? Because I'm down a, a full rook. We do not want this. And we're down a rook and a pawn, actually. This isn't playable. It's illegal, because the pawn is pinned. So out of the two, he has the more vulnerable king. Vulnerable. This is a, a like half an idea. This hit the knight while he's distracted removing his knight. I come in here with an un unstoppable mate. Hmm. All right. The other thing to consider is if I take and he recaptures. Like if I have my queen here or here, for example, I take H can't recapture because then I have queen H8. Checkmate on that. Okay. The queen here takes, that one takes. I take with a rook, pawn can't recapture because we've got queen h8 mate. So let's do this idea because I think this is pretty winning. I take the pawn, he can't recapture with either. I 
If I take f takes, rook takes here, check. He goes here, queen in, mate. Knight blocks his mate, I think. I'd really like four points, Kofi. Maybe it's the glasses. Maybe I need to take the glasses off. No, I feel much calmer now. The fly is dead. Oh, hello. Right, I am going to take this anyway because I want to put my queen here. If I get my queen there, he can't do anything about it. Now, knight, knight takes pawn. Doesn't it work? I declare this is an unstoppable mate. This is like literally an old favorite. If you can get to this position, knight can't move now. I even have f5 attacking the pin piece. King can't go there, can't go there. Wow. That was good fun. That was good fun. Let, should we see if he wants a rematch? Shall we? With the black pieces? Probably not. But there you go. I mean, look, it's, it's a really, really good test. This guy's rated 1330, 1334 in, in Rapid. That is, you know, he, he is capable of taking down somebody who's 200 points high rated. <clears throat> so the idea, I think, with um, with the rating system, what did I, I heard about this the other day? A 200 point difference, it's like a kind of a logarithmic scale on performance. 200 points difference means that you will win, the stronger play, player will win three out of four times, I think. That's the idea. That's like, the standard deviation of the distribution of, of talent. Um, so playing somebody 200 points higher, they should win three out, three out of four times. You might win one out of four times. And then it's kind of similar. If you got 400 points higher, you'd be looking about one in 16. So that's what, why it's reflected in the, the points difference that you get. So for here, for example, 200 points difference. Okay, this is perfect case. Okay, so it's a... Um, just under 200 points difference, okay? And it was a 12-4. A so there you go, 12-4, which means that if I win, I get four. If he wins, he gets three times. So that, that kind of fits the, the idea that that's how it works, okay? Anyway, all interesting stuff. Um, I'm glad I came away with that. It's a really, really good... Um, Wait, I mean, it's, it's great to play stronger players, but it's also great to kind of have to fight from behind as well. So uh, quite pleased with myself for that and to win the Unstoppable Mate. We'll have a quick look at the game review just to see if we missed anything. Because I think the, um, you know, the blunders were obvious. I, I, I'm a bit annoyed about this bishop coming out here because I saw it. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah, and it's mating one at the end. Okay. Um... Best move. Best move. Good. Best. Excellent. Queen e2. So it's saying this is a bit pointless because all you're doing is you're invite, inviting his knight to develop for free, right? Yeah, there you go. So queen e2 is best there. Queen e2 is a more flexible move, I guess. Yeah. So I kind of played that automatically because I knew it was like the move that you play, blah, blah, blah. It says my long castles is a blunder. Okay, so here, castling is inaccurate, because he's, like, do you see how it all came down to this g6? Let's go, go through again, right? This forced g6, remember I said at the start, g6 is a weakness, it's a concession, it's a vulnerability, okay? All right, now he castles that side, bah, not great. So, machine's saying, you should develop your stuff, get, try and get your queen out somehow, you know? Maybe even bring the bishop further out and then put the queen behind it. That's also an idea. Get the knight out. Castle long. Okay, best move. I'm pleased about that. 
You remember I said, like, I'm going to play this almost without thinking. That's kind of forced. It hates this, and now he does have this idea. But he misses it. And then that's actually the best move. And so is that. And that's, you know, that's really good for my opponent. He says queen e3. Hey, hey. And that's a blunder. Should have taken the knight. So he snatched the rook. Oh, man, I could have saved my knight. Could have saved my knight with knight f5, taking advantage of the pin pawn. I just did not survey the board. Do your surveys. See, right now, I'm down an exchange. That's it. That would have been a great move. And actually, it would have left me plus three. Terrible idea. What on earth was that? Oh, that was my mouse slip. Oh, all right, all forgiven, all forgiven. Okay. Takes, okay. So now he's, he's minus six. So this is Stockfish saying this is now a walk-in for black. But you have to hold your nerve. Okay, here, interesting one. It's saying I should have taken the dark squared bishop. And I did think about it. And then I did it. Okay, and the reason is because of g6. It's all about g6. This is welcome to the story of the silly pawn that moved forwards, right? Actually, it was kind of forced, but you know what I'm talking about. It said I should have traded. I'm not bothered. This is all right. This is all right. Now I'm minus seven and a half. This is excellent move. This is excellent move. It said queen g5 is... I'm not going to... Stockfish, I'm not going to... Um, we don't... Humans, hello. We don't do this. We don't trade down material when we're a full rook behind. You map it. All right. Well, g4, g4. Yeah, we talked about all these moves. Now g4. And now minus five. You know, now he's... He's slipping away a little bit in terms of his massive advantage. It should have stuck his knight in there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I was quite happy to see his knight come back there. Attack queen, best. Good. Inaccurate. Should have pushed h5. Well, whatever. Oh, yeah, because I dropped the pawn. All right. Oh, would that have been... No, he's still got queen here, but that's still imprisoning. Okay, excellent, excellent, mistake, ooh, mistake here, f5 is best because I've got a four, pawn can't take, I hit knight, I don't know, knight f8 is blunder, this is blunder, what? It should have taken with f. Let's, because I thought F, oh, hang on, if Rook takes, he's got Knight takes, eek. Yeah, Rook takes is not even an option now. F5 is best here. <sighs> now he comes in with Queen F7, and that's the end of the attack. I didn't think that through, did I? So here, what it's saying, I should have pressed f5 first. Rook e5. Maybe offering back the exchange, but look, I've got two pawns now. Yeah, rook e5 is brilliant, says Stockfish to itself, giving itself a little pat on its little silicon scaly back. Um, so it's not saying to take here. It's in queen f4. Trying to sneak in. Queen f4. And what would a... Black actually has a good move here. Rook e6. Wow. So rook e6 here would have been the only kind of saving grace. Threatening to take out the bishop. Anything else, that's the second best move. Just giving up the rook. And then queen d8. So like queen d8, we, surely we come in here. Is it, 
Oh, let me just take the queen. But this is really interesting. So at this point, this is the key thing. This is the lesson to take away. Here, I played pawn takes and that's a blunder. But then knight takes was a blunder. He had to take with the f-pawn. And black is winning here. See, I thought I had this. And after this, this. That's what I thought I had. Okay, actually, it's not even mate. But, um, hmm. Yes, it was a bit sloppy at the end there. Before everyone says, mm, you're a bit sloppy. So, okay. So here, f5 is winning. Right, I'm blocking out his queen. I'm saying, hold your horses on all of this stuff and we're going to wiggle in. I, I think I just got a little bit overexcited, but job done. One fly, flies nil, hunty one, Kobe nil, hunty one. I'll take that. Thanks for watching, guys. See you all later.